Hi everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with part six of the Beck Spider. We start with our headless spider. We're gonna be putting all the bits back on today. We've got two heads to put back on, and carburetors, and all sorts of stuff we have to get going. So I hope we can get most of it done today. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be awesome. So, all right, well, we got a ton of stuff today, so let's get cracking. I've got everything laid out. There's so many little bits and little steps and stuff. I don't want to miss anything. So I always feel that it's best to kind of lay everything out and make sure everything is completely prepped. My head's all ready to go. Got the spark plugs in it. I've got all my nuts and washers and stuff. And I've prepared my uh, valve cover and my push rods, push rod tubes. Everything has been cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and all prepped and oiled and ready to go back on. So, all right, well, the step one is going to be to put this guy on. So let's get to that. So I have the extractor here already in place because that was the last, very last thing we took off. So we're kind of going in reverse order here. I have everything strapped up here and I have it rotated up enough that I believe we can get this back on again. I've cleaned all of my studs very carefully as well. So they're all nice and clean and the threads are all nice and clean. So here we go. Okay, we've got our back stud on. We can push our head forward. With the head back on the stud, I'm gonna to try to fit that uh, extractor back there. Normally, that's kind of one of the last things you would put on, but because of the way this engine is sitting in here and where the firewall is and all that, I need to put that on first. All right, so next step is to get this guy on. And back, come on, so that we can get some room here. Rotate this guy back, bring this thing over. Yeah, there we go. Now we can get that on that. There we go. All right. Okay, that's a thing. All right, I think we can push our head on at this point. There we go. All right, fabulous. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and lock down the header. I just wanna get it in place so I don't have to fuss with it and it's not wobbling around while we're working on the engine. We have our little lock washer here and our nut. With that exhaust header on, our next step is going to be to get the push rods and the push rod tubes in. Before we put our push rod tubes in, we've got this guy we have to put in, which is uh, just the metal air deflector that goes on the bottom of the cylinder. Super duper important that this thing goes in. Now, it just sort of fits up there. The push rod tubes are going to be going underneath it. And I believe the cylinder head is going to sort of clamp down on it a bit so it doesn't come out. but. That makes it a little bit difficult because we put it up there and it just wants to fall right back out again. We have to put the push rod tubes in. It's kind of a fuss, but I'll show you where this thing goes. So it just basically comes up here like that and fits in between the cylinders here and the head and sort of slides up like that. There's really not much to it. So here's our push rod tube. I've installed brand new gaskets on each side and I'm not going to dress these when I put them in. I'm just going to leave them dry. I've seen it a couple of different ways. A lot of people uh, leave them dry. Some people put a little bit of schmutz on them. I'm just going to leave them dry. If it's a real thing in the future, then I'll go back and maybe seal them. But you know, they were leaking like a sieve before. And uh, I think just a new set of gaskets right up against bare metal is our best bet. Now, the next thing to think about is which way do you orient these things? This way or this way? So the oil is gonna be flowing from the head back through the tube into the engine. So if you have it set up with the fluted end towards the head, then it's going to have to get over this little lip here and then get in. It puts a little, it's possible these things could leak a little more maybe. So I'm going to install it with the fluted end towards the engine and the non-fluted end 
towards the head. Now the only other consideration you have to think about is if you've got high lift cams, it's this car kind of does, the uh, push rods are going to move more on the head side than they are on the engine side. So that's kind of a thing. You want to make sure you've got enough clearance. That's the way these things were installed when I took the car apart. So the big fluted end was towards the uh, car, so or towards the engine, So and this part was on the head. So that's the way I'm going to install them, assuming that we've got plenty of room and movement here. So the way I can get this in is to install the head side first, and then push this in. Watching the push rod, there we go. Whoa, and our metal piece doesn't want to stay put either. This is all great fun. And then push this guy in a bit, move it over, line it up, and it's in its hole. Awesome. You can sort of twist these a little bit if you want to just get a little bit better seal. Our metal piece is in place. Now it's just a matter of doing the other three. Yay, we've got all four of our push rod tubes in. So now we can go back up to the top and start pushing our cylinder head back in, start to get our nuts on and we'll go from there. I've got brand new grade eight nuts, just regular old nuts and a new set of washers. The old set of washers that was on this car were varying thicknesses, varying diameters, varying everything. So we've got all consistent hardware, one little funny thing about the washers is that uh, most of these sort of uh, cut washers will have a flat side on them and a curved side. You want to put the flat side towards the head. Now one last thing, I am going to be using um, at the owner's request a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads of the studs. Now. I'm not sure I feel, I'm not sure how I completely feel about that. It would make it difficult to go back and retorque the heads, but it's certainly going to keep the nuts from backing themselves out. All right, well, since our pushrod tubes are all in, they're under a lot of stress down here. And I need to get the head back towards the engine enough to get at least one nut on and sort of work the other ones on. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to get this back on. It's a lot of force to push against. I've got one stud up there that looks like I might be able to get a turn or so on, almost. Yep, there we go. It's just the first bit of it. There we go, just enough. There we go, a couple of turns. Fabulous. Now we can start to run this in a little bit. So flat side to the cylinder head. There we go. And there we go. Teeniest little dab of Loctite here. And here. And here. And this. Teeniest bit. Put a washer back on. There we go. And our nut back on here. 
Now to cinch up the head by hand, we use a different order than we use to torque the head when we're actually torquing it to spec. So this order for all this bit is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's just to get the head completely seated. One, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then we just repeat that until it's completely seated down. Now we have our head all cinched down. The next step is to actually torque it in place and it's done in two different steps. Actually kind of like three. So we want to torque to, we've, we've got the head synced in, so that's kind of step one. Then we torque to seven pound feet using that same pattern we just used. And then we use a different pattern and we're gonna to torque to between 22 and 23 pound feet. All right. With that initial pattern done, now we're gonna go ahead and torque to 15 pound feet, but we're gonna use a different torquing pattern. Now for the higher torques, we're going to torque in this pattern. One, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. Resetting my torque wrench to 15, number one to 15. There we go. Number two. Number two. Number three. There we go. Number four. Number five. Okay. Number six. Number seven. Great. Now number eight. You wanna make sure before you finish all this up that you look at each one of the pushrod tubes and make sure that that rubber gasket is sitting exactly where it should be, all the way around, seated properly there. Also check on the engine side as well. So we have the two on the left there and these two on the right. Just wanna make sure that your gaskets look great all the way around. Now I'll reset my torque wrench for our final spec between 22 and 23 pound feet. 21, two, and we're gonna to go to 22 and one half. Now that may seem like a pretty darn specific torque spec for this, but one thing to, that's important to understand is that those studs on the car will not expand nearly as fast as the heads will when the car warms up and the cylinders and everything else. So what, what that means is that they're gonna get a lot of pull on them when the, when the engine gets hot. Now, I've heard somebody said that it's the equivalent of 70 pound feet when the engine is hot. And if, it, if you torque these things down too much when the engine heats up, it'll literally pull those studs right out of the case. So the torque spec is very important on this. It's absolutely critical. So don't go above it or you risk pulling your studs right out. Okay, so here we go. Torquing number one. Great, that's that. Now number two. Great, now number three. Awesome, number four. Okay, that's four, then two, five. Great, number six. Great, number six, number seven. There we go, number seven. And our last one, number eight here. Okay, that's great. And with that, the heads are completely torqued. We can just continue on with our assembly. 
Before I go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. Now that we don't have any interference with the bolts there, I just don't want anything falling in. Now one thing's a really good idea is to go ahead and fill your push rod tubes with oil. I'm using a little bit of marble mystery oil. It's pretty good, nice light oil. But you just don't want a lot of air in those push rod tubes and we've completely cleaned them out, blown them dry. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add a little oil to that next. Next, we're going to be installing our rocker arm. Got it in this bag to keep it nice and clean, and I cleaned it up really well and oiled it. Now, something that's kind of cool on these is that the uh, adjusters actually have little balls on them with a little flat spot. Now, we just need to be aware of that and make sure that we don't have this thing turned around with the round bit showing. We want to make sure the flat part is up against the tappet. All right, so we'll orient all our little balls here so that they're as close as possible. We might bump one. We'll double check them. And see, there's one that's all turned around. We're going to flatten that one out. Okay, great. Now, another important thing here I just noticed is that this block isn't exactly centered. It's not perfectly centered. So, which side goes to the engine? Which side goes to the nut? Um, honestly, I didn't notice that when I took it off. But I can see a nice round mark on this side and no round mark on this side. So I'm going to assume that this is the, where the nut's going to go on this side, and then the other side is going to be up against the head. All right, so looking at that, we want to turn this one like that, and we can kind of see that we've got that line there and sort of a curve there. All right, so, and we have to line all of this up. We've got to twist the whole shaft, blah, blah, blah. There's the shaft needs to be turned. All right, there we go. Get this guy down. There's a lot of little guys to kind of get oriented as you put this on. Now I want to make sure we're on each one of our little push rods here. This one there. Okay, one, two. Great. Then three, and our last one is actually kind of stuck. So I'll have to pull back out. There we go. And make sure you are on. Are you on the push rod? You are not on the push rod. Well, it takes like three hands to do this. I think once you get it, it's kind of okay. There we go. That one's on now. I think. Yep. That one's on. This one's on. That one is on. And that one is on. Great. We can fit our floppy washer and our nice clean nut onto this to hold everybody in. Now remember we have one cylinder that's under tension here, or one valve I guess, one valve on one cylinder that's under tension. I want this just to seat all the way. One last check, we want to make sure our push rods are centered. Yep, yep. These are good and loose. All right, we can spin them. Okay, great. Now our rocker arm gets torqued to 10 pound-feet and then a second time to 14 pound-feet. Okay, there's our 10. Great. And now we reset for the final torque of 14 pound-feet. Okay, great, all right. I'm going to loosen up each valve here because we have to reset all of them. Just to make sure everything is working fine and I can spin the push rod just, just so. It's great. You know, this is as good a time as ever to go ahead and set the valves on this side. So I'll go ahead and do that. Remember, of course, I've said this a zillion times, we have our steel push rods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them to where I can just start to turn the push rods. That seems to be what most people set these to. And that'll be that. So I'll go ahead and rotate to top dead center, cylinder number one. And we'll go ahead and adjust these two valves.
Next we'll go ahead and reinstall the carburetor. I have a brand new gasket for this as well. So we'll pull our bit out here. I've put the teeniest bit of Permatex on this just to give it a, just a kiss. Just to give it a little better seal. There we go, we fit our new gasket. Okay, and go ahead and fit our carburetor on top of that. The intake manifold here. There we go. Got our little floppy washer and nut on each side. There we go. Same for this side. Just cinch these down. Go, number one. Okay. Well, that does it for the left side of the car. The right side's gonna be pretty much the same thing. So I'll go ahead and get that done and let you know how it turns out. cow that was a lot of work but we got a lot done we got both of our heads on and got our valves all sorted and got our carburetors back on so we're just about there I still have a few more things to do and I want to kind of go over and check that work so I'm gonna end this episode here I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them stay tuned for the rest of the episodes in this series and thanks so so much for watching until next time, safe travels. Bye.